With Rob Lewis and Austin Price, Brett Hubbs, VolQuest.com, a little post-game podcast as Tennessee falls to Florida by a score of 31-19. to Lots of numbers to get into and, and lots of things to talk about in this post-game podcast. Uh, you guys talked about it in the two-minute drill. Uh, the biggest story coming out of this game is what in the world is Tennessee going to do at quarterback moving forward as Harrison Bailey goes 14-21 of 21 for 111 yards. J.T. Shroud in the fourth quarter goes 12 of 14 for 121 yards. Both of them throw a touchdown pass. And the best, th- and, and neither one of them threw the best pass of the day. That went to Paxton Brooks, who, uh, you know, threw a pretty good rope over there to, to Jimmy Holiday, who dropped the ball. Um, I, I think that, you know, <laughs> it's a situation where I think they'll probably play both next week if Tennessee plays that game against Vanderbilt and Vanderbilt can play. Um, it just makes sense that you would play both. I mean, look, J.T. Shrout should have gotten more action than he did the one pass that he threw against Kentucky. That 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 was a a, a terrible use of the kid, and, and and really shortchanged him in a lot of ways. Um, but with that said, Harrison Bailey did nothing today to warrant not getting playing time, meaningful playing time next week. So I mean, I think you play them both. You know, Rob, the head scratcher of this is the fact that J.T. Shrout got three plays against Kentucky. One throw. Th- one throw. It was an interception. Bad throw. I get that. And then he was shelved. Didn't even travel to Arkansas like afterthought. I mean, afterthought. He, he, he bangs up his shoulder this week on the practice field. Still an afterthought. And then he comes in. He goes 12 of 14. And really, only one of those was a bad throw. He short hopped the ball to Cedric Tillman, who was wide open. The other was to Velas Jones, who didn't get his head around in enough time. I mean, it's 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 a big old head scratcher. Like, so why did suddenly this guy is worthy of getting playing time now when he didn't even get to travel to Arkansas three weeks ago? It's, or a month I mean, ago. it's mind boggling when you think how they manage the quarterback position. And I'm not. I mean, yeah, I mean, he was seeing prevent defense. There was a lot of cushion out there, but. I mean, he was making throws on time. He knew where he wanted to go with it. Um, just looked like he was, in com- you know, in command, was comfortable. Um, and then we, when you think about what we've seen, the kind of play we've seen at the quarterback position, you know, going back to the second half of the Georgia game, it's, it's just remarkable that he's not gotten at least a shot. You know, that's just and, – and I'm with AP. I don't think Bailey did anything today in his first college start to warrant, you know, not continuing to, to get on the field. But uh, I think most people would agree that what you saw today from the quarterback position from two guys is better than anything you've seen in the last six weeks. I, I, I was happy to see that they let JT have the full complement of the offense. When he came in the game, they weren't just trying to get it to the triple zeros at, you know, 31 to 7. They weren't, you know, handing it off a bunch. They, they, they really let him throw a lot of different diverse passes. He, that he moved around the pocket. He had a one design run, as Rob talked about in the two minute drill, um, you know, and, and 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 really threw a couple of you know frozen ropes. So I mean, you know, I, I, I tell you who disagrees with you. Anybody that had the Gators minus seventeen and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he he. I, I thought he completely trusted his arm, and I thought he was accurate. The same way I thought that that Harrison Bailey was accurate. I mean, look, maybe they didn't. Str- Harrison wasn't as accurate with the deep stuff, and that doesn't surprise me, given kind of what we've heard and what everybody's talked about throughout the, the year, is that maybe he couldn't stretch the field, hadn't been as accurate throwing the deep stuff. But both of those guys hit backs out of the backfield in stride. Yeah. They hit, they hit I mean, J.T. Stroud hit Princeton Fant three times in stride uh, on a two-minute drill. I mean, their accuracy and their timing w- was – was good all day long. I mean, I don't. I don't think you can argue e- either one of them that way. So you think both just play the next time Tennessee plays? Yeah, I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, I, I don't. I think you can. I think it would be a disservice to either kid to say, "Hey, you know, we're going to just go with the one, the other guy." Like, I, don't, I think it'd be a disservice to Harrison to say we're just going to go with JT. But I think it'd be another a, a, another disservice to to JT after he did have a nice fourth quarter. To say, hey, we're just going to go with Harrison, and, and I know what Coach Pruitt, Coach Pruitt, with the, it's all coach speak. We're going to give them equal reps, and we'll see who doesn't yet. Yeah, Open competition, you know, yeah, whatever. I mean, like, point is, is like, you know, every week it, it's like they have a like damn twister game. They spin the wheel, and oh, it's <laughs> red, blue, and we're going to go with Harrison Bailey this week. I mean, like. It, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense at times, but it, the, to me it makes the most sense going forward if you give those two guys 
the reps and uh, and let them go. Were you surprised? Because I was. Were you surprised that they lifted Bailey in the fourth quarter? Because I thought here's a guy who's played pretty well for for what you've asked him to do for for being a freshman, and he needs as many reps as he can get. Were Were you surprised that they went to J.C. Stroud? I was in the shocked. Quarter? I was just stunned. I was too. The the board was stunned. I mean, the live chat was like coaching malpractice. This is you know, and and then and then you know. Once Shrout played, everybody kind of calmed down a little bit, and you know, I think we're like, okay, well, wait a minute, you know, I wouldn't mind to see more JT Shrout. Not that they want to see less of Harrison right. Bailey, but I think everybody's in agreement. Shrout earned himself more playing time t- the next time Tennessee plays. Another head scratcher on the offensive side of the ball, Velas Jones Jr., mm-hmm. who I mean, seventy y- four catches for seventy yards. Um, and clearly was open. He was targeted a couple more times, and he was open. It's it's amazing to me that he hasn't – that they didn't see that he should get more opportunities during this losing streak. Well, and when you're talking about – and you mentioned it off air, when you're talking about a receiving core that outside of Josh Palmer, you've not got anybody that's taken the top off the, you know, the defense. It's given me anything to worry about down the field. And, uh, yeah, I thought, I thought Velas was – I mean, I'm not saying he's an all-SEC player, but on an offense that is devoid of playmakers on the perimeter, it's just, a, a, as you say, a head-scratcher that you get to this point in the season before he becomes more of a focal point. Yeah, I mean, a guy looks like he could play and get open in this league um, and, and be a factor for you. Maybe he's not a number one receiver, Austin, but he's a guy who could certainly be in your rotation. I, is it possible, and, and, I, and I know we're this far late in the year, but is it possible, you know, no spring, obviously he wasn't going to get here anyway, but really like summer was this weird summer where they didn't do anything like they normally would do. Um, and then of course fall camp, uh, that, that it's taken this long for a guy that just got to the program to really truly know what you have. I mean, I'm not making excuses. Know. I'm just right. playing devil's advocate, just thinking out loud. Like he, he did just get here. It's not like he's, you know, it ain't like he's even been around a year. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, but uh, I mean, he's he was a guy who jumped out to me when you watched him play the, uh, tonight. That hey, you know, needs the ball more. I mean, he averaged seventeen and a half yards of reception. He was targeted eight times with four catches. Um, so I mean, he was clearly a part of the game plan tonight in ways that he had not been a part of the game plan this season. By the way, before we go back to the, uh, we'll go back to the quarterbacks real quick. Big Jim Cheney always loved Tyler Bray. Doesn't Shrout remind you most of Tyler Bray, just arm talent and sure, you know, kind of the throws he can make. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you know, big arm, um, trust his arm, can throw it, um, you know, can throw it across the hash and can do some of the things that he likes to do. Yeah, there's, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think Bray clearly had a much cleaner release and a much tighter release, much faster release, but that's something we heard that Shrout had improved upon, which again goes back to the three snaps and, and, and pack your bags, basically, is what it's been up until tonight. I, I'll say this, too. The one thing I didn't get at the end of the game, and, and, and of course, they went down and scored two touchdowns and made it closer. But, like, here you are in the fourth quarter again. You're down by three or four scores, and there's Brandon Johnson. And, like, like none of those young kids are getting in there. Uh, to me, that leads to discontent heading into the off season. I'm just telling you, like when when you know when those young kids, they they may understand a little better that they're not in there when it really means something early in the game. But for those older guys to be out there when you're down three or four scores late in the fourth quarter, if I'm Jimmy Holiday, Jimmy Callaway, Malachi Weidman, I'd be uh, not too happy. Yeah, and I don't know what they're being told behind the scenes, but certainly the impression that you get from talking to people, Austin, is that those guys are coming, they're going to get more opportunities. They got less opportunities tonight than they did in the Auburn game. Um, I know Holiday had to drop pass on the punt, on the fake punt, but th- those guys got you know got touches and were targeted in the Auburn game, and, and they were not a factor t- tonight as the, the wide receiver rotation still sometimes is just a, a bit of a head scratcher. So offensively, you know, some, some struggles as you thought they would have. Um, some moments where you go, eh, it'd be interesting to see what they do moving forward. Some positive things to come away with that. And then defensively, um, the biggest thing that jumps out to me is just th- this team's inability to get to the quarterback, Rob, is crazy. Because it, it, like, it seemed like a seven-on-seven seven game 
Um, at some points for Kyle Trask, or like you're in the backyard, count to 10 Mississippi on your rush. Yeah, I mean, the stat sheet's going to tell you they had two sacks, so maybe it makes you think that they, they worked on a pass rush, but that is an illusion. I mean, he had a not just a clean pocket for most of the day, he had an immaculate pocket. And, uh, you know, time to scan the field, time to you know, go through his progressions. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it was just too easy, too, way too easy. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't think the secondary was great, Austin, but they didn't get any help up front. No, they didn't. At one point, one of the sacks was a coverage sack. It I was. Mean, you know, that Tennessee sat there and <laughs> defended their rears off in the secondary, and, and Trask had eight minutes back there in the pocket before it finally collapsed on him. Um, you know, Tennessee secondary, again, though, it just – there are just times where they just have so many busts. You know, Jeremy talked about them being in the right call and just, you know, not executing. Have they ever been in the wrong call, though? And I'm not knocking Jeremy Pruitt, but, I mean, we've heard that Arkansas game. Well, we were in the perfect call. We were in the perfect call. I mean, every call seems like it's the perfect call, even though it gives up a touchdown or it gives up a 30-yard completion, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, it just – You're right. I mean, that's, you're right. I mean, I'm, just, I mean I'm, I'm definitely not carrying water for Jeremy Pruitt, but he does, you know, he, did, he, he does say pretty frequently, he said it or not, that he made mistakes, he made some bad calls. Okay. You know, and, and there are times where he's right. They were in a good call, and they just didn't flat out play it the right way. I mean, I, I know at one point he, he had Mc, uh, uh, the freshman McDonald out there for a snap, Austin, and he completely went the wrong way or did something wrong because he immediately came off the field after one snap because he, he didn't, you know, he busted what, what he was doing. And uh, certainly there were some times that they, they definitely had bust tonight uh, in, in the secondary. But, again, the bigger thing for me – you know, when if you're a secondary player and you're sitting there and you feel like you, you got to defend for six or seven seconds because nobody's going to get there up front, it makes it tough to play in the back end. It does. It does. It really I mean, does. I, 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 I won't say that, you know, Kayvon Bennett would have made that big of a difference tonight, but I think he would have made a difference. I mean, you know, uh, he gets there enough to, you know, to I think to acknowledge that, you know, they missed him tonight. Yeah, certainly. All right, so as we wrap it up here, what, what, what is your biggest takeaway for, from this game? I mean, 31-19, closer than all of us predicted. Tennessee has 24 first downs in this game, same number that Florida gets. Uh, Tennessee had two less third down conversions than the Gators had. Tennessee wins time of possession. Um, they pad some stats late to, to get 334 yards to Florida's 452. Both of you, give me your big picture takeaway from tonight for Tennessee if they play Van, you know, maybe playing Vanderbilt next week and another game to play against Texas A&M. What's your takeaway from this loss tonight? Mine, mine is just a team that on both sides of the ball, they don't make those game-changing plays or they make a mistake that is a game-changing play. Like tonight, it's 10-7, to 7, two minutes left in, in, in the first half. You can't let Florida go down and score a touchdown. What does Tennessee do? They let Florida get 10 plays. 76 yards scored, and they convert a third and, and 12 and, and a third and you 10. Mean, and you would tell what it felt like to me? It felt like when, you know, Jake Fromm was down there in the last year against Georgia, when Tennessee kind of battled their butts off, and then Fromm went right down the field right there a couple times right there at the end of the half that just kind of was debilitating. Yeah. It was the same type of thing I for mean, me. Florida's getting the – you played better than anybody thought the first half. You're, you're down 10-7. Florida's getting the ball to start the second half. You cannot let them score that touchdown. Tennessee lets him score that touchdown. Yeah, I mean, gave up a bad play in the middle eight, you know, last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the second half. Tennessee gives up 14 points, and, and there's a different game. Without touching different, the ball. Without touching the ball. And and I think you, you make the good point. It's This team has not been able to make the game-changing play. They've had game-changing plays made against them, but they haven't got the turnover that they need, or they haven't been able to have a big home run play. Whatever they need, they've not been able to get that done. I, I, I totally agree with that take. Austin, what is your big picture takeaway as you leave here? There's two games left. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you know, I mean, to me there were positives on both sides of the ball tonight. Tennessee, you know, Florida got the ball in Tennessee's territory three times. Didn't do much with it. Tennessee's able to get off the field. Um, Tennessee's offense showed some flashes tonight. But it's just not enough. I mean, like, you know, can they beat Vanderbilt next week if they play? 100%. They should beat Vanderbilt next week by double digits. Um, can this team beat Texas A&M in two weeks? I'd, like, I'd lean no, but I think there's a much better shot in that game than there ever was in this game. 
So I, I think that at least they'd have a chance because there's some familiarity there. You're going up against another Nick Saban type style. So, um, you know, and A and M doesn't have Kyle Pitts and in Kadarius Tony, but they can run the ball. They can. They Florida ran over 300 yards today. Yeah, Florida can't run it, which is why Florida I don't think can go to Atlanta and win the SEC championship no. game. Don't think so. And I think I think they got weapons in the passing game, but you cannot line up if you can't line up and run it at all. I, I don't think you can beat Alabama. I agree. I mean, I just don't think they have. You can't be one dimensional. No, certainly can't. All right, so we'll see where Tennessee goes with the quarterback position. We'll see where Tennessee goes with uh, a couple of other things coming up next week. Should the Volunteers play against Vanderbilt and then obviously Texas A&M on the schedule to close it out. So we'll have complete coverage of everything from Tennessee's loss to Florida. And uh, we'll start our coverage for Texas A&M. We've got a little basketball coverage and some recruiting coverage coming up as well. That's going to do it for this post-game podcast here from Neyland Stadium. For Rob Lewis and Austin Price, I'm Brent Hubbs.